Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for the show. As you can see by the chair next to me, Danny will be joining me on set in just a moment. We had some uh, technical difficulties with our front camera. Of course it had to happen like a few minutes before the show. So we're gonna try to keep ourselves in focus. Um, Danny's making sure the technology is running as it should be and then he'll be joining me on set in just a minute. So my regular spam reminder, if you're watching over on Facebook and you receive a private message with what looks like a So Sweetness avatar, oftentimes asking for you to wire transfer or give credit card information or other information like your phone number or address in order to claim a prize from us, uh, please report or block that over on Facebook. And if you're watching over on YouTube, if you've left a comment on the show and you see a reply to your comment. Uh, again, it oftentimes appears to be the same avatar as our So Sweetness logo. Um, again, oftentimes asking for credit card information. Lately, they've been having a phone number in their subject line. Um, anything that looks unusual, go ahead and report or block that. Um, I always announce the winner's giveaway winner's name verbally on the show, and um, Danny has also been typing the winner's name uh, in the description of the show as well, just for, um, if you'd like to double check, you can either listen for the name and um, also verify by checking um, in the description of the show for the winner's name typed in there. Sorry about Hello. the, the shot's a little different. I sort of, you know it's weird? I sort of like the different mm -hmm. shot. I kind of like it. Yeah, uh, our autofocus stopped working on our camera. Yeah, okay. I know, I know you're frustrated, it's okay. You made it work. Yeah. Um, so, I'm still working in the garden. I know last show I said I was kind of wrapping things up, but uh, my dad came out to help me yesterday removing buckthorn. If you're not familiar with it, it's uh, introduced from Europe. Basically takes over everything. The forests are a huge percent, at least I'm just talking about our local area, but I'm sure it's the same case for a lot of states. Um, our forest preserves, a lot of the plants in there are, are actually buckthorn. They take over everything. Uh, it can sometimes look like a shrub or also a tall tree. So my dad came over yesterday and we started cutting them down. Uh, we probably got about 20% cut down and we dragged the trees and shrubs over to the um, driveway just to collect them there. And basically our whole driveway is a huge piles of these buckthorn that we cut down. So we still have a lot to go, um, but the bad thing about it is it spreads, it spreads fast and it basically shades out um, all of the plants that I actually want to have here. So when I first started gardening, I had no idea what that was. Now that I know what it looks like when we're driving places or when I'm going for a walk, I see it everywhere, like I can't unsee it. So. Um, that's my project the next few weeks. Uh, we'll see if we can make um, big progress on that, but thanks dad for helping me with that. Um, I wanted to be sure to leave tons of time for questions tonight just because the demonstrations from last week, uh, while they were great or I thought they were useful. Hopefully they were useful demonstrations. Hopefully you found them useful. Um, it didn't leave a lot of time for questions last week, so we're gonna leave extra time for questions tonight. So if you have a question for me, you can type it in the comments of the show at any time, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Danny's keeping his eye out for questions throughout the show, and I'll be answering some live in just a few minutes. Mary says, make sure you kill the roots because it will grow back. We had them nightmare. I definitely agree. So I, um, I don't like using herbicide. That's just a personal preference. I know that'll do the trick to knock those guys out, um, but I purchased and I've used these before, it's called buckthorn baggies. So basically it's a heavy duty black bag that you zip tie to the stump. So you, we cut the stump six inches from the ground. So you zip tie the black bag to the stump, the cut stump halfway up and kind of blouse it around where it hits the dirt. And in a year or so, um, having that on there kills the buckthorn. Otherwise, if you just cut it, it'll, like Mary said, it'll just grow back and very quickly. Um, 
Oh, about questions. Go ahead and type the que your questions in the comments at any time. They can be bag making questions, question about a notion or tool, general sewing questions, or maybe you have a question about my sewing history. You can type those questions into the comments at any time. All right, uh, Danny's second favorite part of the show when he's on it. Uh, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. That was quick. Yeah, that was quick. Danny and I are both very grateful that you've tuned into the show. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy week for Social Sunday. We really appreciate you. All right, we're going to get over to Danny's pick of the week. All right, my pick of the week is, um, let's start first. Several picks of the week, looks like. We've got, um, Elaine made this, it's a Faithwell hack. Um, Michelle Graham's hack for the flight ball for her cat. I love it. I see the mink in the inside. I sort of want to go inside there. Florine made this chickadee and she says it will not be leaving her side. And I can see why she oh, had I some really that. great details in there. The last picture I show a, a, a little, I don't know if it's a pin or something, but it looked, I love the colors, the fabric. Violet used to have a pair of shoes at that same like cheetah tiger print. They were like New Balance and some of her favorite ones. And remind me of that, her old shoes. I don't know if you remember those, Sarah. Actually, I don't. Oh, yeah. yeah. I kindergarten shoes. Now I do. Yeah. Now I do. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved everything about the zip pulls, the handles, the orange, the, the um, you name it. Uh, that's a little, I don't know what that is exactly, but I thought it looked cute. You see it's like a little mm -hmm. image of a, something on yeah, there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And Lori made this park sling, and the park sling looks amazing, but that photography of that whole picture, I don't know where it's at, but gosh, I want to go there. It looked like an <laughs> yeah. awesome place to be at. <clears throat> um, Tanya made this chickadee, and you know, I'm always choosing the fabrics, uh, with you know like prints this is just like a basic i don't know if, what kind of material that is maybe a canvas i wonder if it's waterproof canvas and i just loved it i love the colors the <clears throat> it's like an army green with navy just i love beautiful. the drawstrings in the pockets too that was um, it looks a modification duty. yeah sure does yeah inside looks great it looks amazing <laughs> honestly i can clearly see myself i would use this my personally it's really nice great job everybody Good job. So many great makes in the past week. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure it was hard for you to choose which ones. Yep. All right. So we'll get started with the questions because, like I said, I wanted to leave extra time for those. So um, go ahead, Danny. Take it away. I'm looking at the side. Like, <clears throat> take it away from where? <laughs> Let's see. Premier K wants to know, where do I buy a Rockstar bag from? I don't have time to sew the bag. I wonder if Rock we... Baby Scissors is a good place to... Yeah, Rock Baby Scissors has made... I want to say close to 100 Rockstar bags. Um, I wonder if we should... I wonder if there's a good way to have some sort of pu public documentation where people could just add their... Um, shop if they make Shop or social patterns. media. Yeah. What do you think would be a maybe, good way to set that up? Like a... Maybe a pin or something on the Facebook group. Oh, maybe. Or like um, a Google <laughs> Sheets that you can link into YouTube video and Facebook video. And the YouTube sheet, you know, they it's oh, a non-editable <laughs> version, and you just have like that bag, and have some people below it that can are willing to make it out of their shop. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. Yeah. If you're watching and you have a suggestion for some sort of database that we could have where people could add their own information rather than us, don't you think that would be easier rather than us going in and adding every single person's contact. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, it's just... like an edible form. They can submit their <clears throat> stuff, then we add it to the final one. We have to make sure it's legit, you know, so it's not some spam. spam. Okay. Got it. Hmm. Interesting idea. Nothing, well, know? if you're watching and you have a concrete idea, go ahead and type it in the comments. We'll try to get it up on the screen. Windless Original says, your tutorials are always so helpful and well appreciated. Thank you so much. I, It's a lot of fun doing different demonstrations on the show and... Um, I, I am still in the middle of working on the new patterns. Admittedly, I thought I'd be a little bit further along by now since it's October now, but um, I guess it is what it is. Oh, speaking of October, I also wanted to mention that since it's October 1st, today is the start of the October challenge. And of course, I've forgotten to link the direct link into the description of tonight's show. However, you can always find the challenges on my blog and the website for that is so sweetness.com backslash blog and they're in um, newest to oldest order and the October challenge should be right at the top and for this month the challenge is uh, there's two options a is to make Hildegard Hildegard's notion trunk from minikin season four I've got <clears throat> I've got one over here 
<clears throat> Excuse me. And um, your second option is to make a Sew Sweetness project with either the addition of clear vinyl, mesh, or fold over elastic. So those either of those three items um, adding to what the pad patterner originally calls for. So assuming that the pattern doesn't already call for, say, mesh, um, if you added mesh to a Sew Sweetness project, that would make you eligible for the second portion of the challenge. And again, you can find the details of that at sewsweetness.com backslash blog. Wendy says, my top stitching never looks right. What thread do you use? I personally use Orafil 40 weight thread. Um, that's 100% cotton, but polyester thread would, would be okay too. I'm not sure. Feel free to email me after the show. I'm not sure if your stitches are a little bit wonky. Um, if maybe some of your stitches are really close together. If it's the case of some stitches being close together than others, um, I recommend uh, A, slightly increasing your stitch length for top stitching. On my sewing machine, I generally use two and a half millimeters for regular stitching of the bag, and then three millimeters for the top stitching, although that might vary based on your sewing machine. Also, sometimes when you sew over if you're top stitching, sometimes say if the seams are on the side, when you get to those side seams, sometimes the thickness of the seam makes the stitches kind of bunch up or get smaller. You can use, um, oh gosh, the name's escaping me right now, um, a Gina jig or something, a hump jumper, hump jumper or something similar. Um, it's kind of like a little acrylic that you slide underneath your uh, sewing machine foot as you get to the thick seam. And I've demonstrated that. Um, you can find it on my YouTube channel. I wish I could think of the name. Of course, I'm thinking of every name but the actual product that I demonstrated. I'm sure it'll come to me hopefully by the end of the show. Um, anyway, that little acrylic helps sort of equalize the thickness as you approach it. And then you just take that little acrylic off after you've cleared the seam. Um, Judy says, I received my gift for winning uh, two weeks ago. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for A, commenting, um, B, watching the show. Um, and as a reminder, all of your comments through tonight's show, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we add up all those comments together, and that's how we draw the randomly drawn winners. So any comments that you're leaving uh, are eligible for entry for uh, tonight's giveaway. Um, Greeny says, with stabilizers, is it possible for you to do a new video or on comparable products by handling, moving them about? Many of us are overseas and like to use locally sourced products to support our stores. Am I coming out of focus? <coughs> yes, that's a great idea. I will write that down for, I'll write that down for sometime soon. I do think it's important to show all the different interfacings and especially as was mentioned in that that question offerings overseas are often slightly different thicknesses or known by different names so I know it can be kind of a hassle or um, I don't know I, I guess a little bit of a struggle to choose interfacings um, if especially if the names are completely different so um, perhaps I will try to get information from people in maybe different parts of the world so that I can make a more useful presentation um, besides talking about the interfacings that I use personally. Maybe we can have a discussion also about different interfacings that are available in different parts of the world. So I'll try to follow up with that in the Facebook group just because I, I personally am not super familiar with all these different interfacings around the world. But hopefully with some of your feedback, we can um, have a well thought out presentation about interfacings. Krista says, I love the idea about using flying geese in a panel. I immediately started thinking about how to incorporate that into a bag I have planned. I'm so happy that was helpful. That was last Sunday's demonstration. I think the bag's over there. Can you reach it from here, Danny? In case you missed it, last Sunday's demonstration was how to add flying geese to your bag. So these are flying geese and it's super simple just a little bit of patchwork uh, to put everything together. And um, the demonstration from last Sunday was using foundation paper piecing, so sewing through paper. Um, I guess something a little bit different and fun to work on, especially if you've never 
um, done any foundation paper piecing in the past. Tabitha's, Tabitha said, going to tackle my first Aragon bag. We'll try to add a mesh pocket on the interior for the October challenge. That's a fantastic idea. The Aragon bag is a great, I've used it for travel. It would be a great uh, diaper bag too. Um, and adding a mesh pocket is something easy that you can do um, and also will qualify for entry for the October challenge. Ella says, have you ever considered sharing some of the monthly challenge projects in a slideshow? Much like how Danny shares his picks of the week, it would be fun to see them. I think that's a great idea. I think the only drawback to that is the, the linky tool that we use for the challenges is a little bit, I don't want to say archaic, but um, it's not super technologically advanced. Um, unfortunately, I can't save those little thumbnail pictures in a bigger size. If I save them, they'd be like really teeny tiny on our screen. So I'll have to think about that, how we can have something where all of the entries are included in the challenge. Uh, let me put my thinking cap on. I do agree that that would be great to see all of the um, entries for each month's challenge. I think it would create some excitement and also um, I think it would be great for everyone to be proud of their work um, that they entered into the challenge as well. Carrie says, for top stitching, do you ever use a triple stitch? I find that helps them look better. That's a great suggestion. My sewing machine, I would have to manually do a triple stitch. I know some machines have um, different decorative stitches such as that. My machine straight stitch only. I'm sure I could implement like a faux triple stitch if I just went back, maybe sewed an eighth of an inch to either side of my original stitching. Um, I guess I never thought of that, but let me let me write that down. I, I do want to try that out after the show, so let me see how that uh, Did will you work. ask for names or something? Because people are saying Linky is stinky. Uh, linky is a little wonky. Yeah. Kinky is wonky. That's funny. That's funny. I missed out what you're saying. Yeah, through the years, they, there's only been, that, I, that I'm aware, a couple different options for like a Linky tool. And what I mean by that is for you to be able to upload your photo as an entry for the monthly challenges. Um, the first option, which I tried for a very short time, you had to have your own website or blog and able to upload a photo and that, I feel like that doesn't really work because most people don't have their own website or blog and... They don't? I don't think they do. And also the, the option that we're currently using, like I said, it's a little bit, it's a little bit finicky. I mean, it's the best that I've been able to find, so. Did you answer that one already? Um, I did, yes. Pam says, any suggestions for good ergonomics while cutting materials and sewing? I do like, I'm trying to think of the, there was a book that I reviewed, I think earlier this year. Yes. So it's got a stand for a sewing machine that's pretty nice. I have a wooden stand for my sewing machine to help elevate it. There's also a book out that I reviewed on the show and then, you know, I just don't remember the name off the top of my head, but it did deal with healthy posture, positioning. healthy posture for cutting and sewing. Um, Having a table tall enough as well really helps with cutting. If you have mm -hmm. a table that's short, you're leaning over, it's difficult. If you get one that's the right height for you, so maybe like an adjustable height table would probably go a long way. There's a few options also for rotary cutters to make it more ergonomic so you're not kind of twisting your wrists. Um, Martelli makes one rotary cutter that kind of you hold your hand in kind of this motion rather than like sideways like this. Um, they have it available in a right-handed and left-handed version. And also True Grips has sort of an ergonomic cutter also. Yep. And they have a ruler to go with that True Grips cutter. The ruler, the ruler has sort of a... A track. like A, a track so the rotary cutter can kind of hook on so you can get a straight cut. And um, there's an attachment that you can remove from that True Grips rotary cutter to not have it hook onto the track in case you have some other rulers. Obviously, most of your rulers probably will not have the track. I've reviewed both of those rotary cutters on my show. So if you go to my YouTube channel and type in, I'm assuming if you type in rotary cutter, both of those reviews should come up. And we also stock both of those rotary cutters on the website, although I think the right-handed version is out of stock right now. Elaine says, also I have a special top stitching foot. Oh, that's a great idea too. A top stitching foot, something easy that you can just swap out with your regular foot and get some nice even top stitching if the top stitching, um, you're finding it to be a little bit wonky. <clears throat> I 
Love your t-shirt, Danny. Uh, Go ahead and give it a shot. Dragon Ball Z. Yes. GT. Oh, it's just GT? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to think what the GT stands for, but apparently it's nothing. It's the version of Dragon Ball. Oh, okay. Michelle says, what weight of thread do I use with cork or vinyl bag making top stitching? Um, I've always used just 40 weight. Um, I don't sew extensively with vinyl. I have sewn a few vinyl bags in the past, but if you use a different weight, I think from past shows, I think I saw several people using Tex 75, if I'm remembering off the top of my head. Uh, feel free to chip in in the comments uh, what weight of thread you're using for sewing with cork or vinyl though. Sue says, took my Enigma on the plane and cruised for my English paper piecing. Whoa, did people want to know about it? That is awesome. A plane, plane ride and a cruise. That sounds like a fun trip. I hope you had a great time. Hope you went somewhere warm. And that's a great idea for English paper piecing also. Keep all your supplies uh, in one place. Angela says, would you be able to source a rotary cutter glove? I think it is important to have one. Now I knew Fonz and Porter used to sell them. Oh, I have not heard about that, but let me write myself a note. I know we carry a couple of Fonz and Porter notions in the shop, but I see you mentioned that they used to, to make it, so I'll see if I can find anything. Alex says, for the people that sell their bags, I think a document in the documents tab is a great idea. At first, you could create a new post titled something along the lines of either So Sweetness Squad, Shopkeepers, or Bag Makers, Beautiful Bags for Sale. That's a good idea. Uh, Dalva says, the book is, thank you, Dalva. Um, the book we were mentioning about healthy practices when sewing is So Healthy and Happy, Smart Ergonomics, Stretches, and More for Makers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Kathy says, perhaps a spreadsheet on the website with stabili stabilizer names and numbers in each country. That's a good idea, too. I like the idea of the spreadsheet. Well, that is looking for ladybug zipper pulls. I love that idea. Um, Cameron wants any tips on sewing clear vinyl bags. Hang on, I'm writing about the zipper pulls so I don't forget. Sure. And I still... Have your other suggestions from a couple weeks back as well. I wrote those down. Oh yeah, um, there were some suggestions for like teacher related zipper pulls like apples, books, globes, school buses. There were a few more as well. Um, sewing with clear vinyl, um, I use a Teflon foot. Um, a walking foot will also work. Basically it helps uh, the foot glide over the clear vinyl rather than sticking to it, which your regular metal foot will likely stick to the clear vinyl. Um, tips on sewing with clear vinyl. I'm trying to think what else. So I, I only designed one bag that was entirely in clear vinyl and that's the Pinto Stadium bag. Um, what I did for that one is I covered all of the seams um, with bias tape just to kind of finish the inside of the bag. Actually, I think we were thinking of a demonstration for future parts of a bag using clear vinyl. So I'll, uh, I'm still trying to think of what that uh, demonstration will entail. But uh, yeah, the number one tip is to use a Teflon foot or walking foot. Um, don't use pins, use Wonder Clips. And um, yeah, I guess those are the top two. Klutz is one glove name. Thank you, Debbie. I'll write that down. Paulette says, I didn't watch last week's to do, you, <laughs> one more time, I didn't watch last week, do you use a special ruler for them? Uh, was that about the flying geese? Uh, probably. So the flying geese demonstration was, I happen to have the scraps on the table since I didn't clean up after myself. <laughs> uh, we sewed through this, oh, this is very shiny. We sewed through this uh, paper, I just printed this out on my regular printer using regular copy paper, and you basically sew through the paper directly on top of the lines. So your flying geese blocks will be perfect because you sew directly on top of the lines and then you just, the paper perforates because you used smaller stitches, the paper perforates and then you just remove the paper and then you have your finished block and <laughs> because I still have it all. Um, <laughs> these were my finished blocks from last week, um, but um, if you go to sewsweetness.com backslash blog, you can find past shows on the blog as well as on YouTube. Um, and if you prefer YouTube, you can find those on YouTube as well. 
Does Sarah's head look about half the size of my head? I know my beard's pretty large. But I'm just looking like, man, Sarah. It kind of does, now that you mention it. I don't it. know if it's the angle of the camera or what, but come closer so you look later. Yeah, Sarah, you got a child-sized <laughs> head. Or I got an ogre-sized head. I don't know which one's which. I think the beard <laughs> just <laughs> makes your head look so much... Yeah, if like... I go like down here with my natural chin line, my head is still way larger than your head. I mean, I am like a smaller person than you. I'm... I think you're like almost a foot taller than I am, so. No, I'm not like eight inches. Uh, Soap and Girl says, I have been thinking about making the cli uh, the chickadee body in leather. Any thoughts about challenges sewing around the opening? I would suggest if you're making the whole bag in leather, maybe to separate the strap. in the In the original pattern, the handles were sort of coming up from the body of the bag and continuous, um, those might be challenging to turn right side out if you're using a thicker substrate like leather. Um, I'm trying to think if Michelle Graham had a pattern hack for this. I sort of feel like she did. Um, sort of cutting the handles off at a certain point and adding some purse hardware like metal rectangles um, so that you can construct the handles um, kind of like double full bias tape rather than pulling everything through the body of the bag, if that makes sense. Um, if you're not able to locate that on my blog, um, feel free to email me. Um, you can also go to sosweetness.com. I have a tab for tutorials and then a sub tab for bag making techniques. No, not bag making techniques, pattern hacks. It'll be under the pattern hacks sub tab. Um, Janet says, Sarah's head would not look right on your body, Danny. <laughs> That's really funny. <clears throat> when making a quilt with pre-cut layer cake, do you starch the fabric? Oh, that's a really good question. Hmm. I guess not a bad idea, spray starching, although it would be a lot of, obviously a lot of blocks you're spray starching. I don't know. My very first quilt was a layer cake quilt. I didn't know what I was doing, so what I did was I washed and if you're not familiar with layer cakes, they're 10 inch squares. Usually if you're buying it as a pre-cut, usually the, the outer edges are pinked with pinking shears. I thought it would be a great idea to pre-wash those 10 inch squares and uh, it was sort of a nightmare. Getting all those little squares out of the dryer and ironing them flat and uh, I would never, I will never do that again, but I learned an important lesson on my first quilt. <laughs> Corey says, if you have an embroidery machine, you can make flying geese in the hoop, makes it easier and faster. Oh, that that's a great cool. idea. Yeah, that does sound cool. Windless Original says, any thoughts about a pet carrier backpack? Or maybe someone has modified an existing pattern. I wonder if the chick... The only one I can think of that might work for that is the chickadee backpack. Maybe instead of the front pocket, like a... Like a pet... That one right there, the Hilda Garden Ocean trunk would work for a small animal. I know, but she wanted a backpack. I don't know. This seems a little small, don't you think, for a pet? For a small dog. Have an opening on the side. For the whole dog to go in here with the lid closed? Have you never seen those purses like that? No, I guess I, I haven't. Have. Yeah. I just, it seems awfully small to me. Those dogs, I mean, little chihuahuas and poodles are quite tiny. Yeah, I think the only thing I'll mention, if you're converting a different pattern uh, into a pet carrier backpack, use the coated vinyl mesh rather than the by Annie's mesh that we sell in the shop because I can appreciate that nails will kind of rip that mesh pretty easily but the the vinyl coated mesh is what we used what I used in the uh, best friend pet carrier Grace says really enjoy your show could you please share where you got the wooden stand for your machine I don't have the information off the top of my head but feel free to email me after the show and I'm happy to look that up for you um, it's really great it just helps elevate my sewing machine what would you say like four inches three yep. inches something no, like that about four inches yeah and it also kind of creates like a almost a free arm on you have a ruler the right there if you pass me i'll tell you exact amount okay okay that works four, four inches, inches on the dots four inches it's amazing even. my fingers are exactly four inches yeah that is that's very interesting yeah so feel free to email me after the show danny's going to put my email address up on the screen please danny sorry Thank i was just you. impressed by my four inch finger you know what they say men with four inch fingers <laughs> They wear four-inch gloves. <laughs> <laughs> There's my email, sarah at sosweetness.com. Uh, feel free to email me, and I'm happy to help you out with that. 
This is tips for sewing with vinyl, I believe. Delva says, with clear longer stitches, uh, check tension, Teflon foot, and polyester thread. I saw multiple people say longer stitches as oh, well. Oh yeah, that's a good tip also to check your tension. I usually, if I'm working with a different substrate, even if it's a substrate I've worked with before, but obviously thicknesses can vary, um, I always recommend taking a little scrap of the fabric, that exact fabric, and checking your tension. And also it's helpful to so with the amount of layers that you'll be sewing in the finished project so I mean generally you're not sewing anything which is a single layer so if it's going to be two pieces of fabric right sides together throughout much of the bag um, I'd recommend folding the little scrap in half so that you're sewing over uh, two layers of the fabric or whatever the case is for the bag that you're working on. Lori says I used to use tissue paper on the bottom before I bought a Teflon foot. Oh that's a great recommendation about the tissue paper. I've tried that before in the past too I think also before I bought my tough on foot. Carrie says, would you please consider adding more number three zippers, please? Um, I'd be happy to take a look at that. What color zippers are you most using for your bag making? Currently we have in the number three zippers, we have the black zipper tape, white zipper tape, and the sorbet, which is kind of like an iridescent rainbow kind of mishmash zipper tape. Um, feel free to leave a follow-up comment if there's certain colors you're looking for in particular. I saw actually a few other comments about three. Uh, oh, really? Number. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Zipper poles, maybe they're thinking. Poles. We'll poles. see. Okay. Jennifer says, I was so surprised and pleased with the Pinto bag and the way the binding went on. Looks like it will be sturdier. Thank you so much. Um, I designed that bag because I had a lot of requests from people that were going to either concerts or other events where a clear bag was required if you wanted to take in a larger bag. And in fact, we went to a concert over the summer. It was an outdoor concert and either you could bring in a really small clutch or you could bring in a much bigger clear vinyl bag. So um, that's an option in case that's the type of bag you're looking for. Karen says, I'm thinking of making vacation cubes as reusable boxes for Christmas instead of wrapping paper. Do you think there's any issues if I used fabric in the top instead of mesh? Oh, that's a great idea. I love that idea because I remember when I was a kid, all of the department stores, do you remember this? You could get like a free box. Like say if you bought a, bought a sweater for your Oh yeah, mom, yeah, a gift box. You could get like a gift box, but they didn't charge you for it. Yeah, it's but like a white box. It seems like now they don't really do that anymore. Maybe I'm mistaken, but yeah, the vacation packing cubes would be a great idea. Um, and just leave out the mesh. You could cut your back panel, cut two of those in place of one back panel and the pieces for the front. I think that would be a great idea. I love that idea. Reusable wrapping in the form of a box. Carrie says, I appreciate being able to buy matching number three and number five zippers for a project. Oh, okay, I see. Matching colors. Uh, Marion says, yes, number three zippers and pulls. Love them. Gotcha. Uh, Rebecca also says blender colors for number three zippers. Okay, got it. There's one for uh, um, aqua and navy number three zippers from Corey. Okay. Maybe I'll look at all they the They also said if you only starch pre-cuts, you don't need the full 10 by 10. Otherwise, one side shrinks. saw two comments on that. It'll shrink by a quarter What inch. was that? Sorry, I missed it. Um, I'll post on the screen. Gotcha. Linda says you can only starch pre-cuts if you don't need the full 10 by 10. Otherwise, one. Oh, gotcha. Okay, thank you so much for that um, clarification, Linda. Mm, interesting. And Carrie says yes, she meant zipper pulls. Oh, zipper pulls. Okay. Any finish except rose gold. Got it. Yeah, rose gold is our, we do sell some rose gold, but it's definitely the lowest seller out of all the other colors. I like rose gold better than regular gold, personally. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Me, personally, yeah. Olivia says zipper number three, orange, baby blue, light mint green, and pink. Got it. What's your favorite color to zipper? Let's ask you guys, what's your favorite color of hardware to use in a purse? Oh, yeah. I personally, number one would be black gunmetal, rainbow, silver, rose gold, regular gold. My order would be, oh, did you forget antique brass? Antique brass last. Oh, really? Okay. Mine are probably gunmetal, silver, I haven't used a lot of antique brass, but we only started carrying it earlier this year. I guess my number three would be antique brass. I do love rainbow, but I feel like I, I don't like rain, using rainbow on every type of fabric. 
Light gold, and then rose gold would be last for me. Similar. It's interesting, Sarah Moon's comments. There's a wide variety. Yeah, there is a wide variety. Mm -hmm. A lot of gunmetal. Rainbow, rose yeah. gold, silvers. Very interesting. Can't go wrong with silver. I think it's just a universal color yeah, matches everything. that's true, yeah. Like, you really can't go wrong. You have a question like, oh, what should I choose? I'd probably go with silver. I can't think of a color it doesn't match. Yeah, it goes Browns, with everything. Browns, blacks, yellows, orange, yeah, greens. that's true. Betty, Betty Marie says, I just purchased the Hummingbird Rainbow Zipper Pulls and love how they look on my new backpack. Yeah, that was a cute one. Yep. The Hummingbird was a recent, sort of a recent-ish edition. You know what's fun, too, is you don't have to get, if you, you don't have to get the rainbow zipper tape to get the rainbow hardware. And sometimes if you get, like, say, silver, silver zipper tape, mm -hmm. you could throw a rainbow pull on there just to, like, Yeah, that's true. You know, contrast yeah, I it. Yeah, I feel like some colors can mix yeah, and you, match like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think we're caught up to the comments. Yep. Okay. Excellent. So we'll get over to the giveaway for tonight. And uh, we put together a little slideshow of some of your Percher and Pouches um, that I found in the Facebook group and the Percher and Pouches from Minikin Season 3. So that's the prize for tonight. If you happen to be the winner, of course, I'm happy to substitute that for um something else of the same value and like i mentioned earlier all of the giveaways are randomly drawn and you have until the end of the day this saturday to leave a comment on the show wherever you watch either on facebook or youtube and i will announce the winner on next sunday's show um let's see i didn't do a good job of writing these down Borg Hild made i love this set. the percher and pouch is on the right but she made other mini kin season three projects so those are all in the picture Bronwyn like I made buy this those first ones Bronwyn made this and it fits uh perfectly in her bike basket I was gonna say that was nice until I heard Bronwyn made it so it's just oh. okay <laughs> it's only okay Crystal mm -hmm. made this beautiful I, version of I love the uh, green the Percher and Pouch yeah I love the green too it really pops oh that's Helena beautiful made set. these two in two different sizes of the Percher and Pouch because it comes in three different I love sizes the gold. in the pattern great Me job too I great love fabric it. too I've never seen that fabric uh, Jessica made hers in Allison Glass Fabrics, and she quilted it. This is a fun one, too. I love the two colors for levels. Yeah, me too. The two different zipper yeah. colors. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I like this fabric. Lisa added a side strap to hers for easy carrying. I thought the side strap was brilliant. And as you can see, she just top stitched it Great to job with your that center panel. Michelle made hers in um, this Zuma is another fun one. fabric from Tula Pink. I love it. It yeah, looks me great too. with the zipper pulls. Michelle Tripp made this one <laughs> with an owl fabric. I have irritable owl syndrome. I love yeah, great fabric. That's really funny. I nice love that. Nice pulls too to match. Yeah. Um, Nancy actually modified hers to add clear vinyl to the lid. So that's the clear vinyl that you're seeing with the zipper. I thought that was a great idea. And she also added elastics. That's a great idea. Patty made hers for Fussy toting cut. some lunch. So um, she made it um, to fit like a casserole to take with. Great job. Ruth made hers in another tulip pink fabric. This is from the Moon Garden fabric line. I like the zipper pull color versus, I mean, the zipper tape. Oh, yeah, me too. They, really cool. Sally made hers with a really fun fabric with cats on it. I love how she chose a plain fabric for the middle. It just looks oh, so yeah, well too. with the colors. I love it. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. Sheila made hers in vinyl. Sheila loves making projects this in vinyl. This is a fancy one right here. Yeah, these are super fancy. And... Here you can see all three sizes, small, medium, Great and large. Great job with that. And then the last one is Susan. Susan made hers in a really delicate looking peacock, peacock fabric, pressed to perfection. It looks like something out of a store. Oh yeah, sure. Honestly. Great job. Great job, everybody. So again, that was the Percher and Pouch and making season three is the prize for tonight. And again, if you already own it, um, I'll substitute for another prize of the same value. So there's one more comment came through for Oh, sure, finish. sure. <clears throat> Oh, Alex says, I noticed that you have new Odif products in stock. Do you have any pro tips on the best way to spread Odie Coat waterproof gel? My attempts have come out in, uneven. So in the past, I've used a paintbrush. Um, you lately, should be using a card. Yeah, lately I've been using, a, if you have any like old like credit cards, expired credit card or like library a, cards. a plastic gift card that you've used already, but you still have the card, um, you, you can use that. So just apply a small amount of... Um, Odie coat to your project in 
in the packaging that we have now, it's a little tiny little a small squeeze bottle. So you can just squeeze a little bit on your fabric and then um, take the plastic card and spread it. Almost like a plastering of a wall. Yeah, so spread from either left side to side, so left to right, and then um, another coat like up and down just to make it um, smooth. You only need a very thin layer. Yeah, and I've been experimenting with different... Um, we have a demo coming up, don't we? Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. I'm not sure Stay which tuned. I'm not sure which Sunday it will be on, but I've been experimenting with different coats because in the past I've done like three coats. You let each coat dry for an hour before you go on to the next. I've been experimenting with how waterproof it is after each coat, and also um, ease of spreading if the interfacing is already attached versus not attached, or maybe different weights of fabric. So. That'll be for a future show. We do have those in stock right now on the website. Besides the OD coat, we also have their new, in their new squeeze bottles, iron cleaner, repositionable adhesive, um, and also permanent adhesive. So I'll talk about all four of those on future Social Sunday shows. Very cool. And um, I have a bonus question for you that you can answer in the comments for an extra method of entry for the randomly drawn giveaway. What is your favorite strap thic thickness? I was thinking about that earlier today. What's your go-to? If you were, if you could make any strap thickness of your choosing, would you do maybe a half inch wide strap, three quarters of an inch wide, one inch wide, one and a half inch wide? I don't see very many two inch wides, but I figured I'd throw that in there just in case that's your preferred strap thickness. So go ahead and answer that in the comments is right it now. Thickness or width? Width. Yeah, more width, I would say, than thickness. Yeah, I guess, yeah, thickness you're right. Thickness would be out, yeah. Width of the finished strap, so. Um, I personally like the one half inch. I like the you wider. You like the thicker? Yeah, uh, I like the wider. Wider, the sorry. I keep saying thick. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Width. All right, let me know in the comments what your preferred strap width is. And thank you so much for tuning into Social Sunday. Danny and I both had a great time, and we Thanks really appreciate up. you tuning into the show. Have a great week, Bye, and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.